Okay, Cindy, you can talk about Hecate now. Okay, we're going to do a brief pause to make it um, easy, easier for our erstwhile video editor. So hello, and uh, let's talk about Hecate. I, I we should just call it, let's talk about Hecate. Um, today we're talking about uh, Hecate and resilience and Hecate, of course, and the dark moon, because we are on uh, the cusp of the dark moon, which comes from most of us tonight, I guess, if you wanted to be technical. I, I, you know, I wrote about that in the Keeping Her Keys book, and I've said it on the blog too, and I've been like, well, to the ancient witches, to our ancestors who were Hecateans, the day started at sundown. Right. And then, of course, because of our calendar, they call the dark moon the new moon. Right, which gets confusing. Which is just wrong. Because the new moon <laughs> <laughs> just plain wrong. Um, so the new moon within Hecatean witchcraft is when a numenia to the ancient witches, Numenia occurred when the first sliver of the moon reappeared. That is the first day of the lunar month. This is the liminal space in between the end and the beginning when we can't see the moon. That, right. is, um, the dark that moon. is the dark moon. So if the day begins at sundown and the dark moon is at 5.28 a.m., which it is here, um, and it's not yet sunrise, then if you want to be like, super precise, which is cool to do once in a while, right? Like it's cool to be like, maybe super precise and do all these things. Um, then you would do it tonight if the sun hasn't come up, come up yet for you. Right. Um, but what you're talking about is honoring Hecate on the dark moon, right? So right. I, I wanted to specify what it is, what you would do tonight, what, what it is. Oh, I saw my crookie on. Um, what it is, is honoring Hecate on the dark moon. And yes, that would begin at sundown um, today, the 20th. 3rd of March. So, yes, that's what it is. <laughs> uh, you know, you could do that. There's lots of different ways that you can honor Hecate on the Dark Moon. I have an article um, that kind of talks about that. I mean, if you're familiar with my work, you'll know that I don't like to be overly prescriptive. In the coven, um, we have a lot of resources available. We have, this month, we're not doing a live uh, coven ritual for the dark moon. We did one last month, right, Angie? Yes. Oh, yeah, because we did that spell drop. Yes, we did the spell drop. Okay, thank you. <laughs> um, so, so that was this month. You expect me to remember it? Uh, we've got a new video class up from that. If you weren't at the spell drop live, the video for that that goes deep into the Triformis uh, ceremony is up now. I put that up last night. In the and the on publicly. We're just talking what's in the coven right now. So in the coven, there's a video class for that. Uh, there's also what we call the Animarum Luna Obscura, which is our coven dark moon ritual um, and coven tarot ritual that Penny developed, which is so amazing. Yes. Um, so there's lots of resources up in the coven. If you are... Um, if you are not in the coven or not, um, I have the evocation of, for Hecate suitable for any right, which is available on the blog and is also in the book. And so I think maybe when we do our dedicated time talking about Hecate in a few weeks, maybe, you know, we should do a performance of that, Angie. Ooh, that would People be really, really enjoy that. So we have a question again on the chat um, asking about um, Hecate. Um, another person knew Hecate as Eket. Is it appropriate to call her Eket? Ek, of course, Eket. Um, that's, I think, years ago when I was really young. Um, that's how I heard her called for the first time by another witch, Eket. Um, what else? There was another one. Jack is asking. Oh, so yes. How many nights? <laughs> That's a good question. Sometimes the moon doesn't reappear on the, the first night. Um, I am not the one to explain scientifically the factors that make this happen. Um, so usually, it's usually like 24 hours after the exact time of the astro new moon. Um, that following night, 
you will see a sliver. So if the astro new moon, like for example, happens like at 5 a.m., which will be starting to get light here, um, that following night, I probably wouldn't see anything, but the night afterwards I would. Because it has to be night for us to get the perception of the returning moon. Right. What else do we have in here? Um, those were the only questions that I had seen coming through so far. Did you have anything in particular where you wanted to talk about Hecate? Well, bring on the questions. I love answering questions. Okay. Um, if y'all have any questions, go ahead and put them in uh, the chat, whether you're on YouTube or you're on um, Zoom. Uh, we're monitoring both, and so I'll be able to bring those questions on over. Um, Obsidian gazing ball. What other crystals are best blessed by the dark moon? Um, the one, you know, so the dark, it's interesting, the dark moon. The dark moon is a very protected time. It's very much, the moon is hiding her face out of respect for the mother. And it is the night that is most sacred to the mother. And it is like the velvet embrace that we need, even though we're resilient and strong, we all need some TLC, right? And we all need some quality alone time. Um, the black obsidian for sure is beautiful for tonight. Um, other black stones, jet, hematite, um, onyx, black tourmaline, black stones to, like, to attract that energy of the velvet embrace of darkness which is so protective. Um, you know, we did, our, we did our ritual with the golden shield, but that black velvet embrace is also super protective and another layer to wrap ourselves in. So stones charged with that tonight. Um, other ones would be like red jasper. Um, you could attune clear quartz for it, because of course clear quartz will go in any old direction you want it to go. So those are some other stones. What are some other ones, Angie? What stones about <laughs> I was looking at stones or questions. I'm I was managing the the question. Um, uh, so for me, it's anything that is um, dark hurts. Anything that's about um, anything I use for grounding. I like to set out during the dark moon. Sometimes I even have um, particular tarot cards that um, I use specifically for my Hecatean work that I put out at the dark moon. Um, because it's any sort of energy to me that needs to be sort of clean cleansed or reborn um as opposed to full moon charging right because the full moon is more about illumination right um, and so this is this is more to me let's like uh, a lot of hecateans modern hecateans we we uh do dip non on the dark moon we clean the house we create Hecate supper. It's about this like cleaning and honoring. So let me put out my stones and my cards and things that are specific, you know, maybe my croaky or other things that are very, very Hecatean or specific to that kind of energy. That you want to be blessed and, and, and like, uh, and invigorated for the time that I didn't say smoky quartz. I can't believe I forgot smoky quartz. <laughs> um, and talismans that you have. So here is my beautiful smoky quartz. Or like I've got the stropolos. So it's a great, anything that is most sacred to Hecate, um, you would put out tonight. And especially anything that's, like you said, about grounding, protecting, banishing stones, um, banishing cards, anything in terms of that. It's a good night for, um, to start that energy and to, to kind of bridge the energy between we, we go through the, you know, the waning and removal to the waxing and attraction. Right, right. So um, we have a, a question that's come in on YouTube. It's uh, different than what we've been talking about. Are you okay if I sort of shift us over to the YouTube question? It's a Hecate question though, right? Specific, yes. But I think that it's, um, I think this is a good thing for you to address. Okay. This person says, two months ago, I was watching Sabrina and I was introduced to Hecate. I was drawn to her. Does that mean she's interested in me? I'm not a witch, nor have I studied the witchcraft or Wicca. Well, that's how it goes. Right? 
Um, that, and that's sorry, not to be glib, not to be glib. I know how confusing and overwhelming it can be for the first time when when Hecate calls, um, and you know you're you have that moment. But after you become more experienced with Hecate, you'll you'll also be like, and that's how it goes. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Hecate represents the most like the the power source of us who are witches and priestesses and wild folk. She is the anima mundi. And when we, it, it can be an experience like that, like we're watching that beautiful um, evocation of Hecate in Sabrina. It can be just a knowing, right, Angie? Like something can happen. And that is, that is, that opening, the cleavage, you know, Hecate is the chain breaker and the cle earth cleaver. That's that cleavage in your soul. She's rattling it and opening it up so that you can, you feel called to her. And what is happening is she's calling you, but it's that internal call that is unique to you to be authentic, to live your life, whatever that may be. Um, so it can be, again, a very confusing um overwhelming time my advice is always to take your time um, don't rush into it don't worry about getting things wrong um, you won't uh, don't worry about whether or not it is hecate if this to you feels like hecate it is she's not um, a goddess or a force who accidentally um, touches anyone because it's within us. You know, as her chosen, we have that vibration within us that we're awakening to something we already know. Exactly. So if we have somebody who's new, um, how can they cultivate the relationship with her? Well, I recommend my blog. I've written so many articles about Hecate uh, when I started a couple of years and there's this oh yeah there's that too <laughs> yeah book coven. come join us in the coven i cannot even begin to tell you how many resources we have there and if you are stuck at home right now um as part of what's going on in the world um now's the perfect time to join the coven and like dive into the amazing amounts aren't you also going to be doing um like a mini course on hecate coming up i think <clears throat> yeah i'm going to start one just like basically it'll be a live course that has exercises each week so we'll have a live class with an exercise to do and that is for absolute beginners um so we're going to talk about you know how to do um a ritual on the dark moon if you're an absolute beginner what correspondences are what her symbols are and uh you know just the absolute kind of beginner course to hecate that will be starting soon but <clears throat> as it I'm sorry, I'm all. Angie, you talk for a minute. Okay, I can talk for a minute. Um, we have all kinds of resources. Um, if you don't want to join the coven, check out Cindy's blog. Um, there are some amazing um, resources there, um, totally on how do I even begin? Uh, what does it mean to be called by Hecate? Uh, what are the ways that I can uh, begin to understand this calling? So um, you can at least start at the blog and um, you can come join the coven as well or potentially take this class that is coming up. I think the most beautiful thing to do, especially since it is the dark moon, is just to get your candle. If you, if you can light a candle um, or a battery operated candle and just to sit and you know say to yourself, um, I am ready, I am worthy, you know, like the chant that we did do in the coven, um, just to sit with her and to acknowledge that you are worthy and to open yourself, just relaxing into the candle and taking a few quiet moments. You can leave her an offering if you like. Um, I mean, the offerings that she favors the most are the ones that come from the heart. So you can release um, your fears to her and she'll take those she loves fears yeah we have a chat going on within the zoom uh, chat all about how Hecate is the eater of filth you can give her your fears you can give her the things that don't feel good you know these are the things that you can offer up to her as an offering and she loves that 
Bobora Forba. Bobora Forba, <laughs> my favorite epithet. Peter um, of Silk. Well, the woman who uh, um, asked this question over on YouTube, Cindy, um, has responded that she knows that this is for me because tears are running down my face. I've been lost for so long. So this is very beautiful. So thank you, Cindy, thank you. for um, an answering these questions. And thank you, um, I believe the name is Jolinda, um, for asking these questions. So, <clears throat> Cindy, we have a whole bunch of questions that came through in Zoom as well um, that I want to start working our way through. Are you ready? All right, can I just try to do something with the camera? So it's oh, yeah, I, just, I wanted, just wanted it like that so you could see me So in the altar, but I feel like it's too far away. So start asking questions. How's okay. That? Um, so um, I thought this was kind of an interesting question. I had not um, thought about this specifically. Um, so when we're talking about offerings, especially offerings on the dark moon, because this is traditionally a time to provide offerings, um, specifically at like a crossroads to Hecate, um, is there something that we can offer at a crossroads to Hecate for the healing of the virus across the world? Oh my goodness, yes. Well, first of all, of course, um, offer her the energy of the, like she, this is like, there's an, is that a little bit better? Basically, I just did the same thing. Whatever. Um, so basically, yes, yes, of course, is the answer. Um, you know, and <clears throat> we can offer her things like, uh, you know, garlic, for example, which is an antibacterial, astringent, antiviral. You know, we can make our offerings, you know, I'm bringing you this medicine, mother, and I ask you to empower it and strengthen it and, you know, uh, shield the world with this medicine. I am, I, find, I always find answering this question tricky because I don't subscribe personally or in my teachings to like, if you give this thing to this, to Hecate, she will do this thing for you. Right. Because I mean, like, if we're going to get really real here, Hecate is anima mundi, the primal force that fueled the world and the force that, that runs through in all of creation. She doesn't need cakes. <laughs> Honestly. Right. <laughs> um, she, <laughs> she will gladly accept a heartfelt offer of cakes. You know, I made that beautiful Strophilo's cheesecake. Um, yes. And then sat down and had it with her in presence with her. Um, so, you know, I'm not the person to talk to if you want like a prescriptive offer this deity, this thing, and they will do that thing for you. That's not, I can't, I just don't do that. Yeah. Um, so I'm not, I'm not saying it's wrong though. I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm just saying I don't do that. I don't teach that. Um, you know, going to the crossroads is itself an offering, right? Because if we go to the crossroads at night, it can be a little dark and scary. Hecate is very amenable to when we feed her creatures. You know, so if we take apples, for example, which are safe for most wildlife, maybe not historically something that um, the ancient Mediterraneans had very often, you know, to using uh, their rituals to Hecate. But, you know, apples are safe, carrots are usually safe, animals like that. So honoring her animals is something that's very near and dear to me. As you know, Angie, I do that every day. Right. With the animals. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm, so the act of going to the crossroads at night and leaving something is an offering in and of itself because it is you responding to the call within you that is Hecate. And there is no better way to please the mother or any mother than when she sees one of her children um, committed to living their truth in a way that is respectful to her and making the most of the gifts that she gave them. Absolutely. That's why we did this spell drop last month, right? Because the, our spells, our ability, because I know I wrote in the book and the blog, I don't typically do spells um, on the dark moon, but I, we wanted as a coven to do something that's an exception and to use spells as our offering to her. Right. You gifted us with these powers, so we are going to, to offer you our spells showing you that we're making good use of what you gave us yes 
absolutely. Another way that we can make good use of what uh, she gave us as an offering is a suggestion that Jack had in the chat, that if you're in a condition or a place where it's possible and safe, you can make an offering of service. You can help neighbors who might be stuck inside. You can donate food to your local food pantry. Um, you, if your neighborhood's on social media, you can look up and see what people are setting up in terms of mutual aid groups. So there are so many beautiful um, ways that you can provide offerings. And she is well pleased by that energy because she is um, very much a, as regal as she is and as much as she is you know, the terrifying empress. She also is the protector of the marginalized and the weak and the downtrodden. She is a just queen. Um, and there's an app, I'm on it here locally, it's called Neighborhood or something, and everyone is sorting themselves on that too, so I don't know if you have that app in, I think that app is all over. I don't mean, I don't know it's something, I don't know what it is. Next door? Um, I think there's yeah, one. Yeah, that's what it's called. Next door. Yeah. Um, so we have somebody who asked a question here um, about Hecate and plants. I realize that Hecate loves plants. I take care of many plants in my yard devoted to her, but I don't like clipping them and I'd rather care for them. So can I use crystals or stones instead of plants as correspondences, perhaps adding stones to a candle? Of course. Um, and I do that too. What do we have here with stones in it? So this, this little, this is part of our, um, physical physical grid that's fueling our astral. I have some quartz in it. Um, one other very important consideration, you don't have to clip plants at all to work with their spirits or draw their, uh, their medicine into your spells. No, you can use cards. This was a huge game changer for me, Cindy, when you first started talking about this. Um, until recently, I was living in Tucson, Arizona, a desert space that does not have a lot of typical um, plants growing in it. There's no way that I could grow things like clover um, or, I don't know, pine was not exactly easy to find or fern. Um, and so you can use oracle cards and they bring in that plant spirit energy um, as a, it's a beautiful way to do this. One other thing that I wanted to say briefly is like, for example, my aconite or my dittany, um, I don't like the Dittany at the end of the, I clip the Dittany throughout the summer so I, it'll grow more. But most of my medicine, most of my witchcraft that I do with Dittany and Aconite um, doesn't involve clipping them. It involves communing with them and asking for their powers, their properties, their essence um, to be added to a spell without doing anything to the actual plant. So we had some folks asking about the Oracle deck that I was showing. It is the Hedgewitch Botanical Oracle deck by Ciolo Thompson. Um, I was trying to see if she had a specific website for it so I could send you to her website to order it, but it doesn't look like I can send you to her website. Um, it just looks like it's on the normal Barnes and Noble um, or Amazon. Um, so that is the Hedgewitch Botanic Oracle. The Druidcraft one is really good too. Um, it's an older one. I don't think it costs very much. It's a little older. So Jack is saying, I would love to see a class or workshop on how to commune and connect with plant spirits. So Jack, the Botanical Foundations of Botanical Witchcraft in the Coven is a free uh, course on um, connecting with plant spirits. And eventually we will have a keys to Botanical Witchcraft course, which will um, allow us all to go deeper. Um, but for now we have the foundations in there. Yes. Um, and there is an extra a ritual in there for doing that. Jack, in, in the Mistai, we get into that too. We get, go deep into that in the lesson. These are, this is the Druidcraft one. Um, so the, the lesson on Hecate's garden, we go deep into that. And I have my book coming out for Samhain this year is all about that. Um, Hecate's garden, the magic, medicine, and mystery of plant spirit witchcraft. So lots coming in terms of that. And we'll be doing a seven week course in the fall um, to coincide with the launch of that.
Yes, it'll be fabulous. So when we give offerings to Hecate, Cindy, um, we had a question come in where folks were saying, do we literally have to leave this offering outside? Like it might be rainy or it might be, you know, maybe we don't want to put, if we're like recharging our, um, or not recharging, but we're like cleansing crystals or stuff, um, do those need to be outside um, or is it okay if we keep them inside? Well, I think it, like I said, I like to usually, um, Hecate's month is, I, I observe and keeping your keys observes Hecate's month in November. I love what in November, um, as everyone in the coven knows, like I do like a big, it's a big thing. Um, that's just me and Hecate and I go to the crossroads and I bake a whole feast and I do the whole thing. And again, in the new book, I get into all of this. Um, so you don't have to leave things outside and you certainly don't have to go out in the rain. I can't, unless you feel called to go out in the rain and you need to be washed clean. You know, again, this is about, um, you're not dealing with some petty sort of deity. You're dealing with the anima mundi. Um, when you're awakening to that, evolving into that in yourself, if you feel like you need to go out into the rain because you need to be washed clean, go out into the rain. If you um, want to just do something super simple, um, my bowls of dirt are not adjacent to me, Angie. You know I like my bowls of dirt. I know. Interesting. I must have put them away. Strange. Everything is away and tidy. Um, <laughs> so you can just get a little bowl of dirt. Um, it's nice to get one like from a place that's super underworldly, like an entrance to a cave or a marshy place. And just like make uh, three, like a three crossroads on your altar, or I do it with three different um, branches of like oak or uh, poplar, you know, a tree that's really strongly Hecatean and just make up three way crossroads and do your whole ritual about that. The crossroads is about returning to truth. So, you know, going to the crossroads because it is energetically like our spiritual home, and it is the, the juncture between this world and the spirit world, it's awesome to go there in person, but you can completely conjure that energy without physically going there. Yes, definitely. So um, additionally about um, offerings to Hecate, um, Jem asks, I've read that we can offer Hecate quitting a bad habit. So can we offer our resolution to quit a bad habit on a new moon? Like not stopping right away, but like offering our milestones and steps. Um, so like, it's like our journey of quitting. I think that's so beautiful. And in the Mistai, in the, the intense like master course, the course that takes like um, 13 to 18 months to complete, we do a whole cycle of devotion. And I think that's starting April the 1st, isn't it for some of them, the ones that started last fall? Yes. Lesson seven is starting, right? Yes. So lesson seven jam is all about this cycle of devotion or cycle of, um, offerings where you go through giving up something for a month or adding something new for a month um, as an offering to your sacred self and to the, to the mother. So yes, it's beautiful. Awesome. Okay, so I think my way through the questions. Uh, we have a question. Um, I think I'm going to go over to this question first. Uh, someone is asking what they can use dark moon water for. So a lot of us put water out under the full moon to get charged. Um, what if we put water out under a dark moon? Well, dark moon, well, dark, um, um, dark, dark moon water is amazing for sacred rites for Hecate. So you could do it this month and then you could use it like to anoint your statue. Um, you could use it to anoint yourself. Uh, during the you know the next month and you could bottle it put some put your crystals I love making a really simple um, aqua uh, an aqua sacred a sacred water charging it in the dark moon in a black bowl put like a hunk of obsidian in it or um, you know like the three sacred stones like obsidian red jasper and clear quartz and then um, keeping that water and using it for anointing yourself you could add herbs in if you wanted to. So dark moon water, protection, of course. Um, keeping secrets um, in terms of just like, there's it's Hecate and very sacred, but you could also use it for keeping secrets, protect any kind of protection. 
Um, anything you want to conceal is very, and it's also really great for uh, any kind of work that you're doing around like deep spiritual work, like returning to the cave, going back into the womb. So if you're getting ready for like one of the rituals of the sacred cave, whether it's the uh, death walking release or soul retrieval or rebirth, that dark moon water would be perfect. So some of you in the coven who are getting ready for our rebirth ritual, which we're doing around May 1st, now's a great time to kind of um, start making your plans and you could start charging some dark moon water. Fabulous. So we have um, somebody who's saying that a dear friend is currently quarantined with her abuser across the country and would dark moon water be helpful for, for this person here to as she's doing rituals around protection. And it seems to me like that would be beautiful. It would be, be beautiful. And if you're doing it like via distance, which of course works just as well as in person, you know, like let the water sit out tonight. Um, and then maybe tomorrow morning before, I would do it before sunrise. As a lot of you, Angie, you know, I do, I do get up before sunrise and that's my witchcraft zone um, is before sunrise. So, you know, and offer it and just see that water again, extending like we did the golden sphere, which you could also extend to that person. Um, but you could also just like take that water and add it to the golden sphere. And that is that protective, that velvet embrace, you know, it's a very different kind of protection. It's that dark velvet embrace where you're almost cloaking the person energetically, mm -hmm. right? And it also, if you wanted to use it that way for protection. Okay, so we have a number of questions still remaining. Um, those of you who have asked questions both on YouTube and on Zoom, I am prioritizing the questions so that if somebody has asked a question specific to Hecate, or the dark moon, I am putting those ahead of questions that are more general in nature. Um, so we will um, eventually get to your questions, but you may see other questions answered first, and that's because really we're focusing on Hecate and the dark moon right now. So Cindy, um, we have a question about epithets. What epithets are most appropriate to work with right now for protection, strength, but also to honor the anima mundi and her power and energy during this pandemic? Well, we already talked about Babora Forba, the eater of filth the divine goddess eater of filth. Wabora Forba, and maybe someone, um, I don't know who's with us, who can pop the spelling in for some people. Um, so it's like B-O-R, B, see, see if I can do it out. B-O-R, B-O-R, there we got it. Oh, thank you, Angie. <laughs> That's what, it's, it's difficult to spell. There should have been an O. <laughs> Bobora Forba is excellent eater of filth to send the vi to petition her to eat the virus, um, and that it you know is regenerative out of her womb into that which will heal humanity. Um, there is also you know, and this may be a little bit controversial, but as someone like me and in what I teach and I write about, I see Hecate as anima mundi, soul of the world. Um, the world. The mother knows um, what's going on in the world and the mother will seek to correct any imbalances in the world. So it is a time of course to petition her that we transition individually and societally through this really time of crumbling of structures, of societal structures that we go through it as well as can, as possible. But I would never, I'm not the person, and again, I'm not judging people who do this. I am not the person who was going to say, um, you know, tell Hecate to stop this. I tend to believe that the soul of the world, um, that it is our job to respond um, and rise to her call, but not to, I don't know. I didn't even have the right words for it. It's like, I'm going to say, I live where we get a lot of hurricanes. Some of you know that. And um, I do a lot of protection, witchcraft around the house, get the house ready, you know, in practical sense. But I never do any witchcraft to send the hurricane away. There is a greater force in the world than me that is designing this experience of the world and that hurricane is coming here. So it's not it's really, you know, I don't know. Angie, did that make any sense? Um, it does. It's definitely a tricky um, kind of idea to try and navigate. Um, 
I think that uh, everyone's going to have their own sort of uh, interpretation of how it works. But yes, the the I completely understand we're getting um, folks in the chat indicating that they understand what it is that you're saying. Um, you know, I, I don't see myself as someone who can um, override what the, you know, the Anima Mundi thinks is best. Um, and if something is happening that's not best, she already knows about it. That said, we can still do our part to protect and care for ourselves and our families and our communities. Right. And come together because it is about our response to what's going on. Right. And it is always about empowering, answering that call, right? To lean into it, to grow, to learn. I mean, that is primarily, you know, Hesitate's takes keeper of the keys of knowledge and wisdom, magic, medicine, and mystery. Um, and it's up to us. You know, we find ourselves in this situation where so much is changing so rapidly and it's so overwhelming. And of course, we'll have our days when we're just like, like yesterday, I was about ready to like blow up the world. Um, because it was just so stressful to go everywhere with all of these funnels that you have to walk through and just everything just to go and get my oldest son is a transplant recipient. And I, I want to say that actually I am going to say that because I know we're running out of time, but I will say that I, uh, I don't say these things lightly. I have uh, my own oldest son has been through horrible trauma in his life. And I have been through a lot of trauma and I've been a psychologist and worked with families and women um, in crisis for decades. And the only way through when the shit has already happened, happened is to accept it and deal with it. And that's how you heal. And wishing whatever it is away, whether magically or through avoidance coping, is the number one thing that I, we know from science and energy work that that is the recipe for disaster. Absolutely. That is not going to get us through the situation any better it has happened yes you know, it has happened and here we are we are here to figure out well what the fuck are we going to do about that right yes um and so the virus will come and the virus will go uh we will remain and this is i've written about this i've been i actually looked went through some old of my my blogs on pathios and i actually like i was like fuck i've written about this a lot like, you know, I put it in the book. I talk about the holy darkness is nigh. Um, yeah. And it's a feeling I've had, and I recant this story about this event I was um, at several years ago, about 13 years ago now, with a bunch of um, women leaders who worked in caregiving and trauma research and treatment. And so they're Aboriginal women, they were healers, they were psych psychologists and physicians. And we just had, we had this really, this, dinner that became like this ritual where we were all talking about how um how this is it this is the return of the divine feminine and you know it's like the mother has returned with her vengeance and her medicine um you know the earth was made unhappy by things that have been going on for several hundred years so it's not you know it's a really difficult time to live in at the same time, I don't want to sound so fucking philosophical, like nothing bothers me. I was like, I got, you know, a woman yelled at me at Costco yesterday and I yelled right back at her. Uh, <laughs> right. <laughs> right? You know, but so it's I'm, like, you know, last month we had our um, initiation ritual for the Misti. And one of the things that um, came through uh, for me during that ritual was that this is just the beginning. This is just the beginning. There's so much, and, and I don't mean to say this to sound fatalist, but the way that the message came through was there are so many more tears and so much more pain to come. This is just the beginning. But the message that was coming through with that was, and I've got you. Yes. And I've got you. You've got this. And that trust, which is something, Cindy, that you and I were talking about uh, the other night that sometimes uh, I can struggle with, um, that trust, that we must trust that we are going to make it through, that we are going to be able to glean meaning and grow I mean, because we could we could just be pissed off about what's going on and not like turn it into any sort of anything in our lives, but we have the opportunity now to be able to say, "I'm going to take this 
I'm going to use this to build my muscles. I'm going to use this to um, really grow into who and what I want to be. And that, I, and that is like the gift of like awakening the soul. And for those of us who are, who belong to Hecate, who are, you know, deeply spiritual witches who practice her madis, ma magic medicine and mystery, like we were not designed or put here into this life, into this incarnation um, to kind of like have this easy life, you know, where everything is just perfect. Cause it's our school, it's where we're learning. This is the classroom we are in. It's not the classroom. There are other classrooms in this school of ours, but they're not our classrooms. And that's and what resilience is, is like, this fucking sucks. Um, and I'm going to be mad. I'm going to be angry. Like yesterday, I literally did, um, you know, that deep belly, soft belly breathing that I really advocate for. You can watch um, the Ice Shaman videos if you're not familiar with the technique. I literally sat in the living room and did that for an hour after I got home. It's like, I will not let this consume me. Yeah. And literally like at Costco, after I got in this argument with this woman and walked away, it's literally like, I will not be consumed by anger. I will not be consumed. <laughs> like, I'm walking by like a hundred people in Costco. So, I will not be consumed by anger. And they're all like, <laughs> good advice, lady. <laughs> I will not be consumed by anger. I'm like angrily saying I will not be consumed by anger, right? <laughs> I've definitely you know, the anger. Um, thrown some temper tantrums here. You know, I've stomped my feet or, you know, allowed myself to whine because sometimes you have to like get that, ex you have to express, you know, the emotions that you're feeling in order to like move through them and then be able to do something productive with it, right? And resilience and being attuned to Hecate and being attuned to that deeper energy of the anima mundi is like, we do these things and then we have that moment where it's like our recovery time is so much shorter. Yes. Or it's like, this is what I need in this moment. I need to sit and talk to Hecate about this. I need to say to her, I'm making you this beautiful offering because I hope it inspires you to make, you know, to help keep us safe and blessed. Yeah. During this time, I am calling upon you. I'm showing how much gratitude and affection I have for you with my beautiful cakes that I've made you. Because I didn't, don't want to think people, I'm not diminishing cakes. I'm just saying she doesn't need the cakes, but she appreciates the cakes. Right. Right. She has everything she ever needs, but she appreciates our gifts and offerings because it shows that we're sincere and committed um, to whatever we're petitioning her for is protection um, for the family and for, you know, to give us more resilience, um, to lessen the blow as much as possible on the world of what we must go through in the coming weeks and months and years. Yeah, definitely. So Cindy, any questions? I think we're at 2.30, aren't we? Yes, we are at um, 90 minutes. We have a whole bunch more questions. It would take us probably another hour to answer them all. I know my wife is working from home. She is having to jump on a phone call right now. So we've got a little bit of extra noise coming in from me. Um, would you like to bring us to a close? And these are questions that we will either keep on deck or maybe we'll answer uh, written. Maybe we'll um, do a separate um, thing where just you and I talk through the answers. What do you think? Well, we can totally do a separate thing. I would absolutely love if everyone could go, who isn't in the, so in the coven, we have an Ask Me Anything post that's in our featured content. So if you're in the coven, pop them there, love them there. If you're on, um, not in the coven, on YouTube, on the community channel for my page, there is an Ask Me Anything post, pop them there. And we're happy, we usually do address questions every week in our um, coffee break. Yes. So I don't, didn't want anyone to think that I was like against offerings. It's a complicated thing. I want people to feel empowered to use what they have on hand to offer bad habits or be of service um, and to just take some time to really listen and be aware. Um, take a few moments to unplug tonight. Yes. So the other thing I wanted to bring up is we have what we call Hecate's Help Desk. So you can also um, alternatively uh, send these questions to info at keepingearthkeys.com. If you want to ask them privately. Beautiful. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, we will get...
this on YouTube later. Um, it'll be in the available in the coven for sure later on today, but it's a bit long, so we're gonna chop it up before we pop it on YouTube for other people. Thank you so much um, for joining us. I wish you protection, nourishment, and blessing, and be resilient, rise strong, take all the time you need, and just take a few minutes tonight to disconnect. May you be well blessed, and hail Hecate. Hail Hecate. Goodbye, everybody. Bye, everybody.